Hello and welcome to this, another episode of HCP TV. Today we're talking about summer. Around this time, our summer groups would normally be in full swing getting ready for their stays in Hosanna House, which always happens from around May, June time, right through to the autumn um, in October. But although we're, we're hoping to offer people the opportunity to travel to Lourdes in the late summer, as with everything this year, we just don't know. But we are talking to people and we are hoping to get people there if it is safe and if we are allowed to do so. Almost everybody knows about the joyful Easter week where HCPT descends in Lourdes and takes over the place with our colour and our brightness and our loudness and our singing and our laughter. But not that many people know about what we do in the summer. And so through the next couple of episodes of HCP TV, we're hoping to change that and to inspire people to think about perhaps coming again when it's safe to a pilgrimage holiday with us in Hosanna House in Bartrez. It's important to share some of the stories about what goes on in a summer pilgrimage. And to start the ball rolling, we're going to be going to Father John Carroll up in his parish in Glasgow, um, who has travelled many years um, at Easter and also for a long time with summer groups uh, from Glasgow to, uh, to Hosanna House. So let's hear Father John's reflections on both Easter and what summer means to him. I was sitting the other afternoon re-watching some of the highlights of our Easter week 2021, some of the liturgies and some of the broadcasts that we put out for this year and thinking like that like the rest of the world it's amazing how we adapted ourselves to that situation. How, like so many other human beings, we have had to change what we do, adapt what we do, get used to a different situation, and yet still carry on. To date, we have had two virtual Easter pilgrimages. And that means that we are in our second Hosanna House season, where we find ourselves at home rather than in France. I've travelled with HCPT at Easter since 1983 and during the summer to Hosanna House since 1997 and I thoroughly enjoy both. They are so alike and yet so different. In many ways, our pilgrimages are the same. We visit the grotto. We pray there. As a group, we come together for Mass each day. We spend time in prayer in the chapel. We spend time in prayer, as one of our group, Doogie, does at the statue of St Bernadette. We spend time in prayer in different places, alone and with the members of our groups. We take part in the same processions. We visit the same cafes, sing the same songs. We go the same outings or spend days away from Lourdes itself. There are so many things that we do that are the same and yet we do them in a different way, perhaps in smaller numbers, perhaps as a quieter presence. Yet still, we are one pilgrimage. And that got me to thinking what it is that makes us the same. We are all of us invited by Mary to come on pilgrimage. Invited to get to know her son Jesus better. To experience his love. We're all invited to change lives through pilgrimage, or rather, as Brother Michael said, to allow God to change lives through pilgrimage. And we're invited to share God's gifts of love, 
friendship and joy. I wonder when we look back on 2020 and 2021, what we will remember of the COVID years. And when we ask ourselves, were you on pilgrimage? We should definitely still say yes. We may not be physically present in Lourdes, but we are still on pilgrimage. The pilgrimage of growing as children of God. We accept Mary's invitation. We draw closer to Jesus. We share his gifts. We may do it in a different place. We may be doing it in London or Glasgow or Birmingham or Liverpool or Manchester or York or Carlisle or wherever, rather than in Lourdes. But we are still sharing those gifts. And perhaps one of the most important things to remember about Bernadette herself is that she spent a long time away from Lourdes and yet she said that she went there every day in spirit. So let's continue to travel to the grotto in spirit as we wait to return there physically, hopefully next year. God bless. Take care. Thanks, Father John, for that lovely reflection on both summer and Easter. We're now going to go to Dave Turner, who is the group leader of Group 71, um, which is based down in Sussex. Um, he's also um, the group leader of Group 565, which is the number um, of his summer group. And he's going to share with you the stories and what makes their group special and a little bit about the, the young people who have transitioned from being um, in, a, in an Easter group to then becoming part of a summer group so they can still continue their HCPT lured experience. Over to you, Dave. It could easily be said that there are huge differences between the Easter pilgrimage and the summer pilgrimage. And then on reflection, maybe perhaps not. There are some shared experiences. The ingredients are all the same. Age ranges might be a little bit different, might be more varied, but the spirit, the love, the joy, the knitting together of the group as it comes together, it's all exactly the same. But these are the ingredients that money simply can't buy. And also they are the ingredients that can't readily be expressed. You have to be plugged into a group to feel the electricity, the magic, the laughter, the spirituality, the love, the looking out for each other, the flexibility to change your programme at the drop of a hat. Easter, at Easter time, you can pin your programme on the anchor points of the week, such as, well, the Trust Mass, the welcoming service to begin with, Torchlight Procession, Regional Mass, the day trip to, uh, to Gavani, something like that, and also your meal times. But summer pilgrimages, you tend to uh, hinge on the availability of the shared transport, the chapel availability for your group, meal times, which is why HCPT gives you a skeleton template to fill out well in advance and you submit that to your Hosanna House. The two groups that are able to stay at, uh, late at uh, Hosanna House tend to pass like ships in the night. But when a spontaneous interaction does happen, it could be a moment of real joy, absolutely lovely. The real difference you notice when going to Lourdes, though, when you go down into the town in the summer, and leaders who've done a renewal weekend and stayed at Hosanna House will know what I'm going to say next. You're down the town and you're looking round, thinking, where's everyone else? And in the summer, your groups can easily melt into the crowds. But there are nice moments when you visit your old haunts and the staff there recognise you from your times at Easter. Something which I noticed um, in the summer groups that uh, when I've been out and about and you've had a, a, a long morning in the, in the town, I used to look forward to going back to Hosanna House for the peace, the tranquility, the meals, back to the chapel, the beauty of being in the grounds. And being back at base, there's a sense of 
security, a warm feeling of being safe, and you can relax knowing that you can account for every member of your group. With both Easter and summer pilgrimages, you have to do the same homework, exactly the same preparation, and you're forever consulting other group leaders. You're looking at the group leader's handbook, the website, the templates, the fundraising has to take, be taken care of, health, health and safety, risk assessments, planning and the meeting of deadlines, calculating room allocations, safeguarding, and being so reliant on HQ for all those little niggling questions that you've got. And even in fact, using the staff at, uh, at Hosanna House, emailing them with your little uncertainties. To be fair, our group, summer group is a new one. It's only travelled the once and that was in 2018. What a wonderful week it was. I knew that we could have done a few things better, but that's when you rely on the wisdom and the experience of the other members in your group. You grow and learn. And that's the same with the Easter pilgrimage. And that's where the role of the debrief comes in really handy. We all arrive back home absolutely drained, could sleep for a week. But you look forward to that reunion, the sharing of photographs and shared experiences. And absolutely everybody signed up for the 2020 year. Which reminds me that the makeup of groups are a little bit different. At Easter, your group delicately falls into two camps, helpers and the young people that you're looking after. In, some, in the summer, your group is made up of a slightly different age profile, somewhat higher and varied, and people fall into categories for the want of a better word. For example, there's helpers, those who need assistance of varying degrees. You have some independent tra travellers who are neither helpers or in need of assistance. You can even have people from the same family that's in the mix. And there are those who are not so young and agile who might never have been to Lourdes before and perhaps have never had the experience to travel to Lourdes and you can offer them that opportunity. I remember as a young helper being at a large celebration of mass in the grounds of the proposed Hosanna house site. It was closer to Lourdes, but the site was not meant to be. But at that time I came to learn of the inspirational motivation behind those young people who wanted to relive their own experiences of Lourdes that they had as children on the children's pilgrimages. And they yearned to stay in a place of retreat and experience all those gifts that Lourdes has to offer. In our summer group, we took such young people who knew Lourdes from being youngsters, but they never thought they'd ever get the opportunity to go back to Lourdes again to go into the baths, to be at the grotto, to process in the torchlight, to go on the petty train, to sit in a Lourdes cafe and experience the love and the camaraderie of being in, a, in an HCPT group, to share in the love and the nonsense, the uncontrollable laughter in those sh very shared special moments that only you and your young person will ever speak of. But we knew we hit the mark when someone said to me, it was their best time in Lourdes ever. Thanks, Dave, and thanks, Father John, for sharing your reflections on Hosanna House um, with us. Uh, Dave, thank you especially for talking about the young people who have graduated from Easter to becoming members of a summer group so that they can continue their HCPT and Lourdes experience. Personally, I have spent many, many wonderful pilgrimages um, at Hosanna House um, with groups from Leicester and Newport and Hinckley, and it is a place very dear to me. And hopefully I'll tell you a bit more about that um, another time. So it just remains for me to say thank you for watching this episode. Um, thank you for keeping in touch with us. Please continue to send us your thoughts and your ideas and your suggestions for continued um, episodes of HCP TV, um, especially if you are part of a summer group or have been part of a summer group. If you have any uh, special stories or pictures or film clips that you would like to share with us um, that we could perhaps edit and use in going forward in the future, please get in touch in all the usual ways. 
Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I promise you, you won't miss a thing. So as I stand here um, next to the statue of Our Lady in the month of May, let's ask her intercession and pray for all pilgrims around the world. So if you'd like to join me and pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Bernadette, pray for us. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon on the next episode of HCP TV. Bye.